Hey guys, I want to introduce you to something today uh, a little bit different than what I usually do. Obviously, this is a huge channel for TrueNOS, and uh, I'm a big believer in what they're doing there. But not everybody needs a full-on like NAS appliance. I mean, like TrueNOS is, can be deployed to an enterprise class level. It does some really cool stuff. Some people are like, hey, I just want to have a really pretty front end for my Docker containers. I don't really need redundant storage, ZFS, snapshots, any of that data protection. Everything I'm keeping is I can... I I can stand to lose. I don't need the really robust data protection of TrueNOS scale. What I really like is just a really good forward web UI. And if that's you, you're going to want to check out Casa OS. It's a really, really cool way of getting a beautiful front end uh, onto basically what is either Debian or Ubuntu for our back end and allowing you to do some pretty cool stuff with Docker, containerization, things like that. So on this window, my Proxmox window, I've set up a new LXC. Uh, this is just, uh, an, you can do this in a VM or full-on LXC. I've just done it in an LXC. And over here is this casaos.io. I'm just going to basically copy the script right here. Very simple. And uh, I'm going to paste it in here. And you're going to see here, uh, it's going to do all the cool things it's going to need to do to install all these dependencies. So it's going to go through now and install the Casa OS operating system onto my Ubuntu 24.04 um, system. And after this, we should be able to boot into Casa OS. So I'm going to kind of hang back and wait for this process to finish. Uh, and then we're going to come back in and we're going to look at the front end for Casa OS. Okay, so we're back. Um, this is a virtual machine. This is an LXC. So it didn't go super smooth in terms of I should be seeing my address right here, but I'm not. Um, but I know where this is at. So I know this is at 218. So we're going to give this a shot. Um, this should be running on port 80. So at this point, I'm just going to go to 10.99.0.218. And here we go. This is Casa OS. How cool is this? Let's jump in here. My username is going to be admin. I'm going to set an insecure password. You guys want to set a secure one. Password is too simple. Of course it is. I'm just doing this for testing purposes. There we go. Okay, I'm going to accept this. Okay, this is Casa OS. So we're building this again on top of Ubuntu. This is showing what's going on. Uh, I've got 10 gigs of RAM on this LXC. I've got four CPUs. It's showing you my local time. Uh, this is the hard drive that I have attached. It's reading it as 500 gigabytes, which is weird because I think it's a little bit bigger than it should be. Um, so we have some options here to install some apps. Uh, we can drag some stuff to sort around. So it's giving me this really cool thing. Let's look at our storage over here. Drive. So it's reading a drive. It's reading a 500 gig drive, but uh, that's not what we have passed into this. I believe I've given this 30 gigs. So it's reading the full drive, but that's really interesting. But yeah, again, so the cool thing about this, oh, I should say, one of the issues with this is um, there is no ZFS or RAID on this, so it's just pretty much straight. Um, so it says you've selected to create use directly storage. So I don't want to do that because this is the uh, this is the drive that Proxmox is on. So it's it's recognizing that right there. So I'm going to cancel that. But we have the ability to do some cool stuff with creating more storage. We have some files here. Um, this is showing you all the basics of what would really should be on Ubuntu. Um, this is the root folder. So let's change this to a list. This is, again, kind of like file browser. If I was just browsing through the actual directory, this is it right here. Um, so there's nothing in any of these things at all. You can upload or create as well, which is really cool. This looks kind of again, like file browser, kind of next cloud ish in terms of being able to see what's going on, on your hard drive. Let's get to the good stuff. Let's go to the app store. This is pretty cool. So this is all uh, Docker apps. So say, for example, I want to do a basic radar here. I can click install. I can continue it in the background, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to install this in the foreground. And there you go. Radar is up and running. And here's radar. Notice I didn't have to touch anything. It didn't ask me any questions at all. But now it's running at 218, 78, 78, which is the correct port. Let's jump back in here. Let's come over here. And let's click settings. And I can check that update, which is really cool, too. So this is the Docker image that it pulled. It pulled it from Linux server, which is great. It's calling it Radar. Uh, it's got an icon URL, which is awesome. It shows port 7878. I can change that here. 
uh, this is the internal versus the external, or external versus the internal port. So if I wanted to leave it in 78, 78, but change the external, I could. Here are my data paths. So it, basically it created a, um, these are the bind mounts, the volumes essentially. Um, so this is, it gave everything the data set. So um, of course I wouldn't want to use these. Um, I'd probably want to pass in my case, let's add something here, um, media into media. If I had it, something like that, it's running as a thousand and a thousand, which is cool. Um, that's fine. It's got devices. It's got container commands. It's got all kinds of cool. Look at all that right here in the container. So I'm just going to click save here. That's going to change the volume mounts. And now it's reloading. There we go. Up and running. Try again. There we go. So here we are. So that was a really cool way to install radar. Uh, let's come over here to our set we have what we have we have account and that's just admin let's check the settings here the search bar duck duck go a web ui is on 80 i can change the 443 i can change the wallpaper there's that i can recommend i don't want to see the recommended ad um it's cool it could automate my usb which is really cool there's the restart feature here's the full shell Ooh, not that right there so there's my logs everything going on if i wanted to see logs there's a full terminal here and this is obviously SSH because it's connecting to port 22. So let's see if it's open. Port 22 is closed right now, so I can't even SSH in there because that's Ubuntu by default. It's got a safety turned on. So that is not. Um, so this is going to open a pop-up. So let's allow pop-ups for here. And it just pretty much duck, duck, go to what a home lab is. So that's a really cool way to just jump off right there. Let's come back into my app store. Now here we can also do a custom install which is great because instead of me having all that stuff pre-selected, I can come in here and do everything just the way they did it. This is not super difficult. I'm going to have to know the image tag, uh, whatever I want to call the app. Um, if there's a co uh, icon URL, which is really cool because I definitely know some cool icon URLs. You can check them out on the blog under Godify. Um, here's going to be the web UI, which is going to be that plus the port that I'm going to expose. The network bridge is right. This is the internal port versus external. So you can see how this is kind of built. This kind of goes line by line. If you're, so if you're used to a Docker Compose file, that's cool. You can use the Docker Compose file. You do not have to use this. You can come right over here and click import and just paste your Docker Compose right here. So I'm going to show you guys that really fast. Let's go to the wiki. And let's just paste a simple one for sonar. Something like this. Paste my sonar just like that. Uh, let's click submit. Let's click OK. So now it's going to fill in all of my things here. So it took my compose and filled everything in on this side for me. So let's see how cool that is. So this is where it's going to put the data. This is the media. And again, in my case, I would probably want to put the media kind of like that. But it just took it and said, hey, I want to put everything in the data directory because this is the way it likes to do it. Like this is its version of stacks is the data directory like that. PUID, this is all good. This is all good. This is all good. I want to give it privileges if we want or I can do it unprivileged. Everything here seems pretty good. So it's, it, had, it did a really good job with my Compose container. So I'm actually going to give it a web UI port. And my port in this case can be 8989. And that's just going to allow me to click it. So I can, it'll jump right open. If I don't click the web UI port, it's fine. It'll still run. But what I want to do is I want to be able to click this little icon right here and have it pop open in another window like so. So that's a really cool way to launch an app. This is a really, really cool front end just for managing basically Docker containers, letting me do a little bit of storage stuff, getting a file browser kind of all integrated in here. That's basically what this is. We can do external mounts as well. So we can see new local storage. We can go online with our accounts. Uh, we can connect it to our NFS shares if we already have NS NFS or SMB running. So really, really cool. I think this is actually a, a really interesting product. And here's data. So let's look at app data. So here's radar and sonar. So here's our config. So if we were to come in here, we need to actually mess with anything. This is where everything is in this data directory here. And here's the sonar config that we set up. So look how cool this is. Again, if you don't need ZFS and you don't need the full back end of TrueNOS, this is probably one of the prettiest wrappers I've seen. They even have cool, like, and this is not meant to be, that's really cool. 
Um, this is not meant to be a full tutorial on what Casa OS is. I just kind of want to introduce you guys to it. Because if you're just saying like, hey, I've got a, like a, a computer laying around or a laptop, and it's not really like going to run five wide RAID Z1 all like flash storage. I've just got like a single hard drive plugged into like a computer somewhere. And I'd like to use that to do some cool home lab stuff. This is kind of a really nice entry point for that. I think it works really, really well. Let's come out of this browser. You saw how difficult it was to install. I can uninstall these things just like that. I can restart them. I can check then update in the event that any of the stuff needed to be up, uh, updated. Let's uh, let's uninstall this. I'm going to say, yeah, I do want to delete the user data, but you have the option to leave the host path in here. Uninstall. I could turn one of these off. Let's power you down. So now radar's sleeping. See, it's got a little grayed out icon now, so I can come back in here and power it back on. And then it's up and running. Really, really smooth stuff. So I'm going to come back in here and uninstall that. I, You know, let's leave the, the user data in here again like that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I really like what they're doing here. Now, mind you, again, I'm running this on... Um, an LXC, you guys probably got to run on a, run on a full, M, full on VM, or again, the best way to do this would be to run this just on the bare metal, get your own, um, whatever hardware you're using, uh, whether it be a uh, Dell Optiplex or a laptop, or maybe an old desktop you got laying around, install either Ubuntu or Debian on that, and then just come out to here to Casa O. I, it's casaos.io. I'm going to link this in the video description and just copy this script and just let it run. You saw when I was doing the install, there was a few errors in the beginning. Totally fine. This is a very, very smart script. These guys know how to get around a lot of issues. Just run the script and let it run and let it do its thing as sudo, as root, and you're going to end up right here. So I just wanted to give you guys a really quick introduction to that so you can see uh, <laughs> some of the really other cool options besides TrueNOS out there. I'm just such a huge fan of TrueNOS because I have a ton of stuff I need to save. And I run all of my precious data that I don't want to lose off TrueNOS. But for a secondary computer, or maybe if I didn't have that, maybe if I have, you know, a cloud account somewhere with all my stuff, and I just really just want to run Docker containers and play around with some cool stuff like that, there is uh, there is nothing wrong with this. Definitely come in here, check out the App Store, look at all the cool stuff they've already got preloaded. There is a ton of opportunity here. Look, they've even got some AI stuff in here already. So, yeah, guys, come in here and check this out. I strongly recommend it. Uh, support these people that are building this because I love the direction that they're going. Thank you for supporting me. If you'd like to support me, please buy me a coffee. Like and subscribe to this video. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching.